Question number 16 on the uh, Math 1105 Test 3 review asks us to work with a function that's a cubic, degree 3, and it asks us to do several things. Find the zeros, locate the relative max, the relative min, the range, where is it increasing, where is it decreasing. So, let's start. Okay, come with me to the, uh, come with me to the problem and to the calculator actually. There's our function. And what I've already done is I've typed it into the calculator. Now one of the things I want to remind you that I did before I typed it in, I hit zoom 6 to put a standard window on the screen. I always like to begin there. And then of course what I did is I typed that function by hitting y equals and I typed that in. x caret 3 plus 2x caret 2 minus 11x minus 12. When I hit graph, okay, oh, the zeros are pretty, pretty clear, okay? I can see that I have a zero. In fact, I'm going to write these on my paper. I can see that I have a zero at negative four. I can see I have a zero at negative one. And I can see that I have a zero at three. <clears throat> so that made my life a lot easier that. I didn't have to go through the calculate menu and the zero command to find those. So that, that helped. Um, another, way to <clears throat> another way to tell that these zeros are correct is if you went to table right here by hitting second function table, you could scan the list down the table and you would find the ordered pair negative four zero, negative one zero, three zero, and you would know those were also the zeros. Now the problem here is I'm looking for relative max and relative min and I can't really see it because my graph doesn't go up and down high enough. So what I'm going to do, this is where guessing comes in, okay? You can hit zoom fit, which is zoom zero, but it really doesn't do too much for the graph. I just tried it earlier. I'm going to go to window and I am going to go down to my Y settings. And I'm going to change y min to maybe a negative 25 and y max to a positive 25. I'm just guessing. And I'm going to hit graph. Okay, and when I do that, I actually get to see the graph a heck of a lot better. I actually see the top, which is where the maximum is going to be, the relative maximum. I see the bottom where the relative minimum is going to occur. So that was a good thing that I did, okay? And again, if those windows... If those window settings didn't work, then you try different ones until you see what you're looking for. I'm going to just emulate on my paper for a minute what the graph looks like. I'm not going to make it perfect, and I'm certainly not going to try to draw it to scale, because remember, the picture that you're looking at here is not to scale, right? The, w the way you know that, the way you know this is not to scale is the axes on the y-axis darken and that lets you know that you're not really looking at the normal scale one. Okay, but I'm trying to find this tippy top point and I'm trying to find this bottom point because we need the relative max and the relative min. I already know these points. This is negative four, this is negative one, and this is a positive three. I have the zeros already. I need the min and the max. <clears throat> So remember to do that. We're going to let's find the maximum first. We're going to go to second function calculate. Pick option 4 for maximum. Now we're asked to set a left bound, which means I'm going to move my spider to the left of the hill and hit enter. Right bound, so I'm going to move my spider to the right of the hill and hit enter. And guess, I'm going to put my spider on top of the hill and hit enter. And again, it's not going to come out exact and pretty. I'm going to call this top ordered pair, I'm going to approximate it from the calculator as negative 2.7 comma, oh, let's call it 12.6. Okay, so that's approximate, but it's good enough for what we're going to do. Now I need to find the low point, so I'm going to go to second function, calculate, 
this time I'm going to pick option three, which is minimum. Okay, I am going to move my spider to the left of the hill and hit enter. Then I'm going to use the arrow keys and move the spider to the right of the hill and hit enter. Then I'm going to go to the bottom of the hill and hit enter. And I come out with something like, um, oh, let's see. I'll call this maybe, I'll call this ordered pair approximately, what, 1.4 comma negative 20.7. Okay. Now I'm going to put the calculator away and I'm going to look at my graph and actually analyze answers from the graph. We already have the zeros, namely negative 4, negative 1, and 3. What we're looking for now, and let's look at our graph to find those. If I ask for the relative maximum value, that occurs at the top of the hill, the y value there is approximately 12.6. And notice that I put approximately. The relative minimum is the y value at the bottom of the valley. That is approximately negative 20.7. <clears throat> the range of this function, which we were asked to give, range, remember you're scanning from bottom to top, and really the graph goes down forever, the graph goes up forever, so for the range we have all reals, which we'll write negative infinity to infinity. And the last thing we're asked about this graph is, where is it increasing and where is it decreasing? Now remember, those are always done in terms of x values. Okay? As I scan from negative infinity on the x-axis to the x value of negative 2.7, I see that this portion of the graph is increasing. So from negative infinity to negative 2.7, I have an increasing section. Now, as I scan from this x value, pretend a vertical line goes through here, this x value is negative 2.7. As I scan down to this x value, which is 1.4, so I'm scanning from left to right, I see that the graph itself is dropping. So we're decreasing from negative 2.7 to 1.4. And then, as I scan along the x-axis from 1.4 out to infinity, I see the graph is increasing. So from 1.4 to infinity. And one thing I want to remind you, when you're answering increasing, decreasing, or constant, you always use open intervals. In other words, you don't put a bracket on the numbers. Okay, thank you.